Rachel, a software engineer and 3D printing fanatic. Today, I'm going to give you a simple rundown of the Tina 2 by WeDo, which is a very small and very user-friendly 3D printer. Now, I originally bought this printer for my nine-year-old daughter for her birthday, but in true Aussie form, I haven't been able to stop using it myself. In fact, it's been running every day for the last 13 days. I've made everything from articulating animals to cable organizers, games, dice, and you can probably even hear it running in the background right now. Just to give you an idea of some of the things that you can make with the Tina 2, here are a couple items that I've recently made. So we've got this articulating frog, tons of dice. We are a big gaming family, so we use these all the time. We've got this little articulating axolotl. This was a bit of a test for me. It was a huge file that I had to scale down a ton to fit on the uh, Tina 2 plate because it's pretty small, but it came out perfectly. She's beautiful. We've got a very fun unicorn. And this is what I've been working on for the last few days. I'm printing out 20 of these for my daughter to give um, to her friends on Valentine's Day. Since this printer is so affordable and a really great option for kids, I've noticed that a lot of parents are having a hard time figuring out just how to use the Tina 2. So I'm going to give you a very simple step-by-step -step tutorial on how to print countless files um, on the Tina 2 with ease. So the first thing that is important to understand is that the Tina 2 only takes G-code files. So if you download another type of file, such as an STL file, you have to put it into a software called a slicer that you can slice and generate your file so that the Tina 2 can read it. So if you put the STL file on the SD card that it comes with and put it into your printer, it won't come up as an option to print. It has to be a G-code file. Now, you can download G-code files directly if you find them online, but I actually prefer downloading STL files and using the WeBuilder slicer to manipulate them before printing. If this sounds complicated, I promise it's so simple. So let's get started. All right, so for the fun part. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is download WeBuilder. That's the software that's going to turn your downloaded STL file into a G-code file. So you can just search for it on Google, it comes right up. Um, this one right here is the software that I downloaded and then you need to install it onto your computer. So just follow the prompts to do so. Next, we need a file to print. So there are so many awesome files out there, but I'm gonna head to printables.com to find a free one. Um, I happen to love plants, so I'm going to print this cuttings propagation helper. Um, so the details page is this first one here. This is definitely something to check out. Uh, a lot of the time, the creators of the file will write the settings that they use to print their prototype, which is really helpful. Um, for example, they'll write the infill percentage, the layer height, and if the item should be printed with supports. This one doesn't have any of that information, so I'm just going to keep going. All right, the next um, thing you wanna look at are the files here, and you're gonna scroll down to find the STL files. So there are two of them here. I'm gonna go with the one that has ribs, just because that's what I prefer. And I'm going to download that file. All right, so let's add our 3D STL file to WeBuilder. So I'm going to open up WeBuilder. I'm going to go to File and Open File. All right, you're going to want to choose the 3D file that you just downloaded. Here it is. All right, so this is basically a rendering of the Tina 2. So you make sure that your item is going to fit on the plate. So this one, um, this propagation little cut thingy is meant for a mason jar. So I'm gonna keep it the size that it is, um, but you can click on it and use these squares and you can make it whatever size you want.
All right, next we wanna make sure that um, the object prints right on the plate and is not suspended in the air. So I'm just gonna click on this button here just to make sure that the object is landed. Sometimes you will add an item to WeBuilder and you'll see it'll be hanging right in the air right here. So you wanna make sure that it's touching the base plate. All right, so if you click on the slicing settings, which is right up here. Um, you can decide if you want any sort of adhesion, which is down here, like a raft, a brim, or a skirt around your object. Um, I recommend starting with a raft if you've never 3D printed before, but I'm just gonna click none here because um, the way that this object is, it's pretty flat, so I'm not gonna worry about it coming off the base plate mid print. Um, and then depending on how sturdy you want your object, there's this is the infill density. I'm gonna keep mine at 100% just because I um, really like to have like a solid printed object, but this is going to change the printing time drastically. So if you only have a 50% infill, um, it's gonna be way faster than printing at 100%. And then the last thing that I like to think about are the supports. So. Um, if your object has any overhanging elements that are more than 45 degrees, I would recommend adding supports, but I can create another video about that. For mine, I'm just going to click none. I don't need any supports for this object. All right, so everything looks good. And next up, we're going to slice the object. So I'm just going to click on slice. And you can see this is my G code. Pretty simple. You can take a look at it. Um, I can actually go back to this here so you can you can play around with the settings if you want to change it. So I'm going to show you what it's going to look like with a raft. And you can see this like reddish pinkish outline here. Um, that is actually going to print onto your plate and then your object will print on top of that. And it's really just for adhesion. Um, but like I said, my object is pretty flat, so it has a lot of sticking points to the plate. So I'm actually just gonna go back and remove the raft and slice it. All right, so it's saying that the printing time on this is about an hour and 23 minutes. It tells you how much filament you're gonna need. Uh, I haven't really found that the printing time here is that accurate. Sometimes it's a little bit shorter, sometimes it's a little bit longer, but it does give you like a roundabout um, amount of time. All right, and then the last thing we have to do is save this to our SD card. So I have my card um, in my computer. It came with like a little dongle to put in your computer. And I'm just gonna save the file. I'm gonna scroll down to my WeDo. And this is fine, and I'm just gonna save it. And that's it. So put this uh, SD card back in to your printer and um, you'll be able to print your file, no problem. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Let me know if there's anything else that you want me to go over or any prints that you want me to try out. Um, I absolutely love this thing. I'm amazed at the quality. I'm just really, really happy with it. And we'll see you soon. Say bye. Bye.